Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night video here from Park Street Christian Church in El Dorado Springs, Missouri. My name is Steve Altide. It's my privilege to serve here with this church family. It is Wednesday the 3rd of February 2021. I want to share something that really spoke to me and it goes along with our study we're doing on Sunday mornings here on Revival. And the one cry uh, spiritual awakening experience that we're sharing with our church family here. Um, this was written by Dave with uh, Harvest Prayer Ministry. I know Dave and his wife and Kim, and that's a great ministry of our brotherhood. Um, but he wrote, Has God moved your heart to build his house? He says, During the captivity of Israel in Babylon, Things became pretty good for many of the Jews. As a matter of fact, after 70 years were up, not everyone wanted to return to the land of Israel. Homes had been built, businesses were prospering, families were comfortable. Returning to their ancestral home meant a long, dangerous journey, after which they would face the tough task of rebuilding Jerusalem. To this very day, there are descendants of Israel who have remained in ancient Babylon. So it can be asked, why would anyone leave comfort for a dangerous, uncertain future? But he writes, as I read the book of Ezra, it didn't take me long to find the answer. In Ezra 1 verse 5, we find the reason everyone whose heart God had moved prepared to go up and build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. So the return of the Jews from captivity in Babylon to the land of their fathers was first and foremost the work of God. It was the Lord who, 70 years earlier, had allowed the Temple of Solomon to be destroyed as a result of the continued sin of the Israelites, his people. When he determined that it was time to rebuild, he placed that task upon the hearts of those who were sensitive to his spirit. It wasn't going to be easy, but with his help, the house of God would be rebuilt. And then Dave says, you do know, of course, that the Spirit of God is still at work calling his people to build his house. One of the clearest teachings of Scripture is that God's house is to be a house of prayer for all nations, according to Isaiah 56, verse 7, and Mark 11, 17. That's Isaiah 56, verse 17, 7, and Mark 11, verse 17. And he says, we're already experiencing this as God breathes upon the generations in such moves of God as the 24-7 prayer movement spreading rapidly across the earth. And he says, I believe that when the church truly becomes a, that house of prayer, we'll see an amazing movement of the Spirit of God that empowers us to finish the work, the task of world evangelism. As we consider that task before us of rebuilding the house of prayer, and look back on the situation in Ezra's day, there we ask the question of whether or not the church today is in some sort of a Babylonian captivity. And I believe it is. Have we become comfortable with church as it is? Does it seem too daunting a task to leave behind that which is comfortable and truly become praying people? I'm asking the same thing. And I think one reason COVID-19 happened or maybe... God is using it this way is that God is getting his people roused out of their comfortable lifestyle here in our western culture here in the United States and driving people to their knees that his church is going to be getting closer to becoming the house of prayer he wants it to be and if that happens because um, I think as a rule, God is about done with our country. After all the stuff has happened, all the wake-up calls he's sent us from Katrina to 9-11 to all these different things, um, we're, we're getting a lot of opportunities for repentance to sweep through the church and revival to happen to God's people here. And, and it's hard, almost impossible to get people together to pray in the church. We're too busy. We're worried about the Super Bowl or, you know, what the Kardashians are doing or the royal family from England's doing or whatever. You know, all kinds of nonsensical things. Social media, in so many ways, has become an obsession to the point 
of distracting God's people from prayer and evangelism and the true meaning purpose of the church that of reconciliation so here's the good news God's spirit still moving hearts to go up and build the house of the Lord he's at work the question before you and me today is will we listen to his voice and allow his spirit to move our hearts to join that movement leaving behind the comfort of the ways we've all that we've always done things Will we move into uncharted waters and begin to build that which is on the Lord's heart today? As Isaiah 56, 7 says, For my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. We talk a lot about prayer in our churches, and we talk about the importance of prayer meetings, but there's we have, we're good at maintaining prayer lists and having uh, uh, prayer requests without a whole lot of praying. So God help us to renew um, our hunger for the spiritual discipline of prayer. Father, thank you for the way you're t speaking through a lot of different servants, a lot of different people in this hour here to your church in this country to rouse us from slumber, to again see your house become a house of prayer. We know that we are the living temple of you, the living God. But uh, we have an opportunity for our church buildings to be houses of prayer, as well as our homes and places where we have small groups and classes. They can all be a house of prayer. And I pray that that happens, um, that your kingdom comes that your will is done here in my life and in this community and our church family and all those and other church families that are listening watching this and across this country that revival would come a spiritual awakening would come for the masses of people in this country that are lost and headed towards hell before it's too eternally late help us god i pray in jesus name amen